Okay, hey everyone, this is Mombi. Let's take a look around Twitter and see all the stuff that is really, really popular, hot right now, burning up Twitter, both in Pakistan and internationally. So let's go and see the hashtags that are making the biggest noise when we go to take a look around. Okay, so one of the hashtags that is really, really major right now, and this is really predictable because Twitter is really good for helping you catch up with, um, especially if a movie is a really big blockbuster that has a really big fan following, like the Marvel comics, Batman, Joker, Harley Quinn. I mean, these are things that, you know, people have like all of this, almost this cult-like obsession with. So the fact that the Suicide Squad premiere, the hashtag Suicide Squad, it happened in New York, it's still happening. Instead of a red carpet, they've got a black carpet because of like that dark theme that the movie's supposed to have. Okay, so that movie is supposed to have like this dark theme, so that means sort of a red carpet, they have a black carpet. The first thing that you're going to see when you kind of like look up the um, Suicide Squad hashtag or when you look at your Twitter feed, you're going to probably see a picture of Mark Robbie and she's going to be wearing, wearing this dress which is by the designer um, Alto Zara. And that's like one of these high couture labels. Okay, well, we're used to hearing, well, we're used to seeing like leading actresses wearing something like Bermuda Sashe or Chanel or Dior. So then when you go for a label that is a little bit, you know, off the beaten track, even though it's still a little really high end label that almost nobody can afford to wear, it kind of like makes you think about the personality of the actress. So who really knows if it was like a stylist's call that she should wear that dress with a big unicorn or something. I think it fits her beautifully and she's really, really wearing it well. You know, there's that saying that the dress was wearing her and she wasn't really wearing the dress, but in this case, they really, you know, work well with each other. She's an extremely beautiful actress, not one of my favorites, but I think she lacks in charisma a little bit. So let's see what people have to say about her portrayal of Harley Quinn. And of course, the other people who were present, all the other celebrities, major big faces, or whoever's going to be in the next big face, were present at the red carpet, the black carpet, I mean to say. And chief amongst them, apart from Margaret Robbie, all the attention was on Jared Leto, who is going to be reenacted or has reenacted the role of the Joker, which was made so famous by Jack Nicholson and then was made even more famous or infamous by Heath Ledger. Okay, so I can never pass up the opportunity to see a couple more clips of his portrayal of. You know, either Heath Ledger's Joker or Jack Nicholson's Joker. So let's have a look at them. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Let's see how um, Jared Leto's one measures up. I think he's like one of those method actors who really puts his all into it and you must like be really into the role. Even his official Twitter channel has the avatar is actually that picture um, of him in character as the Joker. Must be a good feeling for him as well. He probably is a fan. He seems like the kind of person who's a fan. So even though it's a blockbuster, and I think blockbusters tend to have a very predictable, you know, script and it's all style over substance. You know, but despite all that, I know people who are so into that Joker, that whole character, that it could be a terrible movie and they're probably still going to like own all the memorabilia associated with it and like won't go to watch it in cinema two or three times. Okay, so one of the hashtags that has been trending for a while now, I mean the past 24 hours, it's the release of the JK Rowling book, the hashtag the cursed child. Well, as you can imagine, Twitter is pretty much full of, you know, fan reviews of the book. Um, that's people who have been really loyal to the whole Harry Potter franchise for the past decade or, you know, decade and a half. I remember I was in middle school when it came out and I'm a really huge fan as well, so I'm definitely going to be reading the book. And that is actually something that Amazon reported that the cursed child is dying with copies of the American Constitution for um, the most pre-ordered or ordered books on Amazon this week. And if the American Constitution thinks I'm strange, it's pretty simple. It's because, it's because of the Khizr Khan and the Ghazala Khan hashtags that have been trending as well. Like in Pakistani American, like, you know, migrant couple whose son Hamayim Khan was killed in the in Iraq in service of 
the American military, and as a result of which they spoke on behalf of Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Convention. Do you remember the hashtag Dems in Philly? And they made a big noise where they were kind of addressing Donald Trump and saying, you know, you don't consider people like us, you know, Pakistanis or Muslims, to be very American, but we've made such huge sacrifices, you know, our son, Hamayun Khan, and you don't anything about a sacrifice like that. And then really famously, Khizr Khan holds up like a copy of the American Constitution and says, Donald Trump, you know, you're welcome to borrow my copy because I'm more familiar with it than you. Okay, personally, I wasn't really impressed with what the Khans had to say at the convention. I thought it was very scripted, very gimmicky. And, you know, I don't really think in supreme nationalism is anything to be proud of either. Although by and large, I think people do side with the Democrats and Khizr and you know, his wife on Twitter anyway. That explains why these two hashtags are so big right now and then there are these um, other sites. Yeah, you know, sites like Amazon saying it's because of prints like this that we are experiencing sales of like this phenomenal level or unprecedented level and you know, the hashtags are what explain that. Okay, so coming to more local tweets in Pakistan, Jag is trending. So maybe they got the story first or maybe they were the ones who the government issued the report to. The report itself being that if somebody can identify a Pakistani citizen whose CNIC card is, you know, fake or it's not legitimate, then if you report them, you can expect to get some kind of like remuneration up to, you know, 10,000 rupees, that amount. That's about 100 pounds or 100 dollars. It's not really a vast sum. Okay, so in big urban centers like Islamabad or Karachi, I don't think that would be counted as a really huge vast fortune anymore. But you know, if you want to be a snitch or snitch on somebody, it's still a pretty good amount. I mean, you can have an amazing meal at a really good restaurant like a couple of times a week with that money. Well, Pakistan has been called a bunch of stuff on Twitter in the past couple of weeks. Um, I think the last time it was Banana Republic and now because of this whole CNEC card, the chip thing and trying to turn Pakistan into Interpol, basically give tabs on all of its 200 million citizens, I think we can now call it a police state as well, a wannabe police state. Okay, and the guy who's behind the law is the interior minister, Chaudhary Nassar. Of course, because of the pictures of Chaudhary Nassar, you're going to have somebody on uh, Twitter because Pakistanis are a very sarcastic bunch trying to show the comparison between Chaudhary Nassar and this other really famous um, international universally recognized faces. Okay, so that is all the stuff that is trending right now. Thank you for taking a look around with me, mommy, and let's see if all the stuff stays trending and if everything can like kind of keep its place within the next 24 hours or if we're going to see all this stuff just more of it in a different form hashtag. And meanwhile, it is a bye bye from me, mommy.